as a nanny and someone who grew up watching Disney, I am no stranger to all these characters, even the most insignificant ones. One thing I couldn't help but notice was that like nearly every Disney movie has to have some sort of animal friend, especially if you're a princess. There are times where I'm thinking, why are you here? So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to rank animal friends, specifically from Disney princesses. Let's make a template. Okay, let's start with the forest animals from Snow White. We first meet them when Snow White is in the woods crying because she sees like scary trees. Oh, and also she learned that her stepmother was trying to kill her. So they just come out, show their cute little faces, little birdies start singing with her, all around a wholesome moment. So out of the bat, these creatures provide something for Snow White, which is security from a traumatic event. They help her around the dwarf house, cleaning and making pies. Even though she had to teach them not to just sweep dirt under a rug, it's still very impressive. Also considering Snow White, she was basically a servant, so I assume she had to do all the cooking and cleaning herself. Just having the animals around while she's doing chores, that's gotta be a really nice change for someone like her. Probably the most important thing about them is that they're really smart. The birds specifically notice vultures over the old hag and just knew like, hey, that's the evil queen. Get her the out. Which Snow White being the kind and stupid person that she is, she just ignores them. But the animals make their way to the dwarves to try to save her, but ultimately it was too late. While they were able to save her in time, they were able to get the dwarves to see Snow White's body and then go after the witch. I will say they're not exactly memorable, but they are cute. So I'm gonna give them a C for cute. Nah, fuck it, they deserve better than that. The birds from Cinderella, along with the mice, they help her get ready in the morning. While I personally find it annoying to have a bird chirping in your ear first thing in the morning, it's still nice. Also, they help make the dress for Cinderella, the one that eventually gets destroyed but it's still very considerate. So, I can't really say there's really much use to them. I'll give them a B for bird. <laughs> Cinderella's mice. Just like the birds, they help Cinderella with everyday life, getting her dressed, and making the dress. The two most prominent of the mice is Jacques and Gus. While the stepsisters are arguing about what to wear and saying that, all that all their clothes are ugly, they sneak in and steal a necklace to go with Cinderella's ball gown. It does backfire, however, even though the stepsisters say that they were sick of the beads and the sash, they go crazy and start ripping that dress apart. This isn't the mice's fault. I mean, it's nobody's fault the way the sisters acted. But in the end, the mice make it up to Cinderella in a big way. First off, they were all transformed into horses, pulling the pumpkin, though it was technically against their will. <laughs> And then when Lady Tremaine locks Cinderella up, when she learns that she was the girl at the ball, Jock and Gus go and retrieve the key from Lady Tremaine's pocket so that Cinderella can put on that slipper and live her life as a princess. So, I give these guys the S tier. The forest friends from Sleeping Beauty don't have a lot of screen time. I think they only appear in one scene, although Aurora doesn't make a lot of appearances either. I mean, if she doesn't make that much of an appearance, neither would her friends. Their existence relies on them being somebody Aurora can talk to besides the fairies. Because she keeps talking about one day meeting somebody, particularly a man, and then Philip just happens to be in the woods. Like, the rabbits and the birds they take his cloak, hat, and boots, they dress the owl up, and they just pretend to dance with Aurora. It's sweet. However, I wouldn't say that they were exactly memorable. I mean, the owl would be. I give them a C. Okay, we'll be going off the animal friends from The Little Mermaid. And no, we will not be going over any of the sequels or spin-off shows, just the original animated version. Flounder is Ariel's best friend. For whatever reason, his parents decided to name him that despite not being a flounder. 
For a portion of the movie, he is the only one that knows about Ariel's secret grotto where she keeps all of her human treasures. He is a bit of a coward, so I would be too if I lived in the ocean. Honestly, I think Ariel's a little bit of a bitch. But throughout everything, he has stuck with her through thick and thin. He then helps Ariel to the boat where Eric and Ursula's wedding was happening, and then he bitch slaps a needle. Do I find him a smidge annoying? Kinda. But... It's not useless. He just has an unfortunate name. I will give him... an A tier. Sebastian. He's a cram. He's a composer. And he was my first exposure to the name Sebastian. He works under King Triton, so I imagine a friendship with Ariel is a bit of a task. After he learns about the grotto and Ariel being in love with a human, he winds up spilling the beans to her father, who winds up destroying all of her human stuff. Clearly he feels bad about it. I feel it is out of safety and fear for the king. While he is completely against her being a human, he does cave in and try to help her get that kiss from Eric. He even conducts a romantic symphony as Ariel and Eric are out in a rowboat. If anything, he's a better father than King Triton. Yeah, he doesn't agree with what's going on, but he still supports her and that's love. I'd have to put him right there. Scuttle. Probably my least favorite one, at least in The Little Mermaid. It's not the brightest. As you can see upon their first appearance, the, he looks for a telescope at the wrong end and he keeps giving false information about human objects like a fork is a dinglehopper, which he uses it to comb your hair, and that information winds up biting Ariel in the butt. I will say he does play a big role in the ruining of the wedding. One thing, he was the first person to realize that the woman Eric was marrying was actually Ursula. Then he called upon his bird friends and seals <laughs> to just completely wreck stuff. I don't know, I'm feeling a B or a C. I'm gonna go with C. Miko and Flit from Pocahontas. You would think having two animal friends that at least one of them would be useful. Neither of them are. Miko is a raccoon, and like most raccoons, he's constantly trying to steal shit, especially food, and that always winds up with him getting into trouble. He does have a few redeeming qualities. He stops Flip from getting in the way of John and Pocahontas. He can braid hair, and he shows Pocahontas the compass, which she realizes is the arrow from her dream points to where John is, and she says to him, Flit? He literally has no personality besides, I don't know, just being a type A kind of hummingbird. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? All he does throughout the movie is basically act as a cock blocker. That is an obvious D tier. Miko, it's between C and D. C. Raja from Aladdin. Honestly, out of all the animal friends on this list, I think Raja would be somebody that I would like to have as a companion. He's loyal and very protective, and who doesn't want to cuddle with a giant cat? It's like a dream come true for me. <laughs> However, if Raja wasn't a part of the film at all, there would be zero change to the plot. And sadly, I might have to give him a D tier. Mushu and Creaky from Milan. So Mushu is a dragon spirit who basically got demoted to incense burner after failing to protect a family member. Yeah, thanks a lot. And when he was told to wake up the great dragon, he accidentally destroys it and just tries to help Mulan on his own. Pretty much everything he does for her is for his own selfish reasons, to regain his honor. When she first comes to the men's camp, he gives her terrible advice on how to be man. Also at one point, he sets off a firework, which ended up alerting the enemy. But he does have some redeeming qualities. You can see he does care about Mulan. He makes sure that she's fed, and at some point, calls her his baby. Mushu and Creaky create a fake letter from the general to order Shang and his men to venture out to the mountains. When it's revealed that Mulan is a woman and she's left all alone, he confesses to the reasons why he did what he did, and in the end he redeems himself by lighting a rocket towards the Hun leader. Though he doesn't get any credit for it, this upgrades Mulan's status as just another woman to a soldier who winded up saving the emperor. Also, I think Eddie Murphy was 
a brilliant choice for him. So he's deceitful, he's funny, and he winds up saving the day. I'll have to go with A. Creaky was supposed to be Milan's lucky cricket while she was doing an interview with the matchmaker. What does this fucker do? He takes a bath in the matchmaker's tea. Milan tries her best to get him out. Everything goes haywire and yeah, he's not that lucky. He does convince Mushu to go after Milan though. In fact, he even assisted him in lighting up that rocket. Otherwise, I think he's just more trouble than anything. That's a D. Ray from Princess and the Frog. He's a firefly. He makes at least three jokes about his butt. And the first time we meet him, he untangles Tiana and Naveen from each other's tongues. <laughs> he shows them the way to Mama Odie's, where they learn how they can turn back into humans. And he goes up behind her snows, trying to get the frogs. Despite the threat of dark magic and scary stuff, he was literally a beacon towards the shadows. Unfortunately, his bravery would wind up being his demise. It's very beneficial. It's very brave. So, I would give him a Ness. Now to the other animal friend in Princess and the Frog, Lewis. He's an alligator who can play the trumpet. He is very much afraid of voodoo and magic. So he's persuaded to take Tiana and Naveen to Mama Odi with the promise of her turning him into a human so he can play with humans. Now it turns out that Lewis has no idea where they're going and they wind up getting lost. Being an alligator, he provides safety against other alligators. When he sees a shadow creature taking Naveen, he abandons his dream to play with humans just so he can help his friends. While he was too late to actually do anything about it, he does discover Ray's body shortly before passing away, and he serenades him with his trumpet at the funeral. Also, he helps Gianna achieve her dream of getting a restaurant simply by growling at the real estate agents. While a bit of a coward, he does improve character-wise. He's extremely loyal, and he's a comic relief that doesn't annoy the shit out of me. I will put him right next to Ray in S tier. Pascal from Tangled. He's a chameleon, which I think it's a clever animal friend for Rapunzel, who loves to paint, since chameleons are supposed to be like colorful and blend in. He's pretty much Rapunzel's only friend for as long as she's been in that tower. Every day he tries to convince her to leave the tower, but thanks to her gaslighting mother, she refuses to. But she finally listens to him once Eugene appears. That would be the last time he had to convince her to leave that tower. Throughout like the rest of the movie, he doesn't really do anything. He's just they're a little cute or, I don't know, do something witty. That is until Rapunzel is back in the tower. After Eugene cuts off her hair, Gothel is just aging and going insane. Pascal uses Rapunzel's hair to trip Gothel, falling to her death. Seems like the perfect animal friend, right? Wait, there's one thing seriously wrong here. He's been in the tower providing company for Rapunzel, doing everything with her, including playing hide and seek. How has he never noticed the hidden passageway? He is always close to the floor. You cannot tell me that he has never noticed it. Seriously, the amount of times that he's probably stepped on that thing and just not given a second thought? Failure. Maximus. So he's a palace horse who's trying to track down Eugene because he's a criminal. The first half of the film, he's a nuisance. Until Rapunzel's like, hey, whoa. Chill out. And he winds up turning a new leaf when he rescues Eugene from being hanged because he knows how Rapunzel needs to be saved. So he's a good form of transportation. He can track people down like a fucking bloodhound. And he knows when to set aside his morals to help a friend. With all that being said, I just don't like him. I know it's supposed to be like the comic relief type of animal friend, but I find him annoying. And also, I think the animators ripped off the horse from Rhoda El Dorado. So, I'll give him a B. Sven from Frozen. He's not really a friend to Anna or Elsa, but he is useful the way a horse would be, I guess. He provides transportation. He's been with Kristoff ever since he was a little boy. And he ends up convincing Kristoff that he is Anna's true love. He's also very selfless. When they're riding through the blizzard and like the ice is cracking, he bucks Kristoff off so he wouldn't get in the icy water. He's not annoying, and 
He's also not my favorite character, so I don't know, B. Hey Hey from Moana. Bruni from Frozen 2. Now, honestly, I've only seen bits and pieces of Frozen 2. I did look up his wiki, and basically, he is a fire spirit, and I don't know if it was intentional or by accident that he caused fire in the forest. He eventually cools down on Nelsa's hand. I know that he also, like, leads her to the other spirits. Also, he's adorable. <laughs> With him also being a spirit, I can't say that he's useless. So... B. And there you have it. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but it's just an opinion. You're free to leave your opinions in the comments.